Villa Podcast Syndicate Production. Samut Sari Conversation with Mimi to connect with other women who may need someone to talk to around everyday life issues and challenges from managing career and household to inner productivity, relationships, and other hot topics. Samut Sari Conversation with Mimi. Hi and welcome to Samut Sari Conversations with Mimi, a podcast featuring hot topics and other topics of interest for men and women alike. I am your host Mimi Laurelia and uh, as you know, for those who have been watching me or listening to me, we are already um, towards the um, almost the 20th mark of my episode so and as you know uh, already we feature guests who share their passion and commitment to their profession or talents or we can also talk about things that matter to our guests so here at samutsari we share stories to inspire you stories from ordinary people who make extraordinary things so that's the logo that that phrase of the slogan of the show and in today's episode i am very lucky fortunate, blessed to have two, two women in, a, in my show. Um, this is the first time I have more than one person as a guest. So you are the uh, buena mano. We can call it a buena mano for having two people. And these people I met through a workshop here in Melbourne. So today we're going to get to know them. We're going to chat with them. Um, but before I really chat with them, I want them to say hi. Just briefly wave, ladies. Okay, and then I'll introduce you, uh, you know, one at a time. So I'll start with my my first guest, Jamie Oliado. So Jamie um, is an international student. She is enrolled in the Masters of Social Work at Federation University Australia. Um, before coming to Australia to study her master, she's a Bachelor of Science in Legal Management graduate. Oh, I want to ask her about that course. She is still a, a very much a single uh, person enjoying her life as a single person and um, she doesn't have children so that means she's not married yet okay so that is Jamie and uh, my other guest is um, Tina Marie Tan Moya Tina is also an international student from the same university Federation University before coming to Australia to also enroll in the Masters of Social Work. She um, is a graduate of Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Supplemental Course in Education. And her primary or previous work experience was a primary or a public school teacher and a guidance counselor. So um, guys, you will notice that our guests have a very uh, diverse background. So I want to talk to her to them about that. So Tina, you first, can you say hi to our listeners? Uh, and viewers hi everyone good day and jamie hello everyone good afternoon yeah it's actually <laughs> good day good afternoon good morning um, when, when when our listeners or our viewers view us it can be any given time um and as you know with the advent of the internet we can uh you know cross borders cross time zone so it's really exciting uh, I think the world of podcasting has enabled us to transcend the barriers of the distance so I'm really excited um, my this is my first time to interview international students um, in, in a university setting I did interview a person before uh, he wasn't he is an international student but he uh, he's studying something around culinary arts you know, cooking, the cooking school. But you are doing your Masters of Social Work here in Australia. Let's just backtrack a bit. So, Jamie, can you tell me uh, why did you want to study Masters of Social Work coming from a different background, legal management? Okay. Um, first of all, um, my dream was to become a lawyer. So... Hence the um, the bachelor's degree in legal management. 
It's actually a pre-law course, a hybrid one, because there's a study of law and business as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to become a human rights lawyer. I wanted to um, advocate and protect those people who are uh, whose um, human rights are being violated, especially in the Philippines yeah. at the moment. There are many cases of human rights um, violation so I wanted to become a lawyer but then um, I was given the opportunity to work in a um, in a law firm in the Philippines and then there I was able to see how the lawyers um, work um, I was a paralegal back then in the Philippines because um, because I wanted to have a feel of the law setting before I dwelled into enrolling into a law school. So there, and I saw that it was a very stressful, it was a very demanding, and sometimes it can get dirty. And I realized that, oh, maybe law school is not for me. So since my um, siblings are here in uh, Melbourne, I've got the three other siblings who are here in Melbourne. They persuaded me to come here um, instead of um, pursuing um, a lot my career in law school. So I look at some um, some courses which I can take, and then I saw this Masters of Social Work. My sister said that um, it's about helping people. Um, helping them with their mental health, their overall well-being. So I was like, um, maybe I can research on this. And then I found out that social workers here in Melbourne are um, advocating for um, women, um, for the elders. They are um, fighting for justice. And uh, I was very, um, I, I got interested to be honest. So. I I asked um, help from my from my agency and they helped me go through. At first, I didn't have any idea. Like I I all I like I have a very little knowledge about social work. Mm. So during my first year, I was very oh, is this really for me yeah. and something like that. But then when I went to my first placement, I actually went to Philippine Community Council in Victoria for my work placement and there I um, work with elders and then for my second placement I did um, uh, I did work with um, Shakti migrant and refugee who yeah. caters to women suffering from domestic violence and then there finally I have a, I have um, see I have seen what it um, what it Feels look like, like to for be you, future. yeah. What, yeah. what and, that future would look like for you? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And I realized, oh, maybe I can. I don't want to become a lawyer, and a social work would um, help me to advocate and um, fight for human rights without doing the dirty job. That's so right. Can, that's right. So I that's a good thing. Help yeah. People. Yes. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's a good point. We'll come back to that later because it's uh, all about evolving and the things that you didn't realize that will happen to you here. So let's go okay. to um, Tina now. Tina, what was your impetus? Why did you want to study master's here? You already have a family. Your career looks like it was well established in the Philippines. So give us a little bit of a flavor of your history. What were you then and where are you now? Um, actually, my story is a bit same with Jamie because I became an international student here in Melbourne due to my sister's encouragement to venture a new life here. And um, also, I could not deny, honestly, to look for greener pasture. Yeah. Yeah. And um, since I'm a secondary teacher there way back home, so it's, I am passionate with um, people helping doing um, social services. Uh -huh. So that's why when I um, saw that offered in school about Master of Social Work, so I asked my sisters if I could um, do that kind of thing. And then they uh -huh. said that they can help me. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm here. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, do you have your family here with you now? Your your kids? Your uh, at husband? this moment, yeah. At this moment, it's uh, I'm with my husband, yeah. but unfortunately, sad to say, my children are still there, way back home uh, due to this pandemic. Um, they're supposed to be here last April because yeah. we processed their papers. Uh -huh. But then, yeah, so nothing to do. We must follow the policy of the government. That's right. I think they will be safe there if their titos, titas, lolas, and lolos are able to look after them. And you can concentrate on your studies. And at the same time, you've got your husband to support you, offer you the emotional, psychological support that you need, maybe financial support that you need. Yeah. So that exactly. you will survive here. So Jamie's on her second year already. She's looking her second placement. Are you also on your second placement at this time? Or are you just starting with your journey? Tina. Um, yeah, we're the same. Um, oh, you're actually, the same. this is my second placement. And uh, actually, we have how many days left, Jamie? One week. I guess. Yeah. One week. Oh, and then you're totally yeah. finished. So what yeah. happens now? So both of you can answer this. What happens now after you finish your master's? Are you going back to the Philippines? Or are you planning on staying here in Australia for a local job and eventually get your residence and eventually get your citizenship? What's the dream, Jamie and Tina? Um, can I go first? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, actually... Um... Our, our field educators yesterday informed us that we could already apply a job while we're doing our second placement, while we're not finishing yet. So that's the beauty here in Australia that um, the people here, um, the international students, encourage the, by the government to apply a job even though it's not yet finished with the work, as long as you are qualified. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, straight right then then maybe next week we will submit our application but that's great that's good news and uh, what about you jamie what's your plan are you going back to the philippines to um set up your foundation and advocate and fight for the rights of the people who are very very vulnerable or are you gonna stay here and build a new career here uh, the plan was to go back to the philippines but um I think I will I will stay here instead because my family is here and uh, no one will be there for me. So I, I think I will stay here with my sisters and start with a social work career helping um, the elders. That's right. Yes. Uh, uh, working in this particular sector is very important. You will not run out of jobs um, if you work with the elderly, people with disability, with the vulnerable groups something around domestic violence because they are the focus of the Australian government. So I think you've chosen the right field <laughs> to be in. Uh, yeah. Because uh, we, we, I, a while ago I said uh, keep that thought because we've talked about pivoting. So you obviously, both of you changed your focus, your initial career in the Philippines. It's the same with me. I think a lot of women undergo that transition in their lives because I used to be working in a university, then I worked in an international project, then I went back to university. But then I said, how come I already work in a very prestigious university in the Philippines, but I don't feel that I am moving forward in my career, my personal life. I don't feel I can provide for the family. So I made the decision to immigrate and, and move overseas, build a new life for myself, build a new career. Forget about who I was in the Philippines. It's now about the now. And it's about what I can offer, my skills, and what I can build for my family in the future. So I think you are already starting that same journey, which is great. So um, as a woman, I wanted to know what were your adjustments? What were the things that you had to undergo? What did you feel? What were your struggles? when you were deciding to move to another country? Because sometimes people think it's a nice thing to do, but they don't know the ins and outs, you know, the nitty gritty of, of moving. I want uh, you to share that experience of, of all the things that you have done through in order to get to where you are right now. Maybe T Jamie can go first, then Tina sec. Okay. Um, actually, I've been talking about this with many others. Um, recently, but I would like to share it as well with um, you and the viewers of um, this podcast. Um, actually, when I went here, I 
my sister told me before you come here make sure you leave everything behind that means your lifestyle though um your lifestyle like you have to forget about your life in the philippines because it will be very different that's right um, to give you, yes to give you a background um my backyard in the philippines was um when i wake up in the morning breakfast is ready my clothes will be um ironed by our helpers it will be placed in um in my um drawers everything is well um well um all in place actually and when whenever i want to go out um we have a drive up my mom will drive me or someone will drive me and then when i want to go home someone will pick me up and um, my life in the philippines was really really different um when i came here i had to do first i had to do my laundry which i don't really know i had to do the cleaning um if i wanted to go out because i don't have a car i have to use the public transport and it was very difficult for me but during the first month it months it was okay i felt like i was a tourist but after three months four months i started to feel the difference and uh, my sister would always tell me it's okay to cry but you know you really after crying you have to think oh my life would be very different if i'm still in the philippines That's so right. Um, I also did a, um, I also applied for a cleaning job. It was very physical. Um, it was my first time to clean for somebody else and it was really hard. Like, I went to a rehab to clean, um, um, to clean rooms actually. So during my second day, I, w I called my sister. I quit. I don't want to work here anymore, mm -hmm. and I can feel, I can feel my joints and all that stuff. And I was crying. I don't want to work here. Like, and my sister said, "What do you want? Um, work there or eat nothing?" And I was mm -hmm. like, "Can you just feed me or what?" And my sister told me, "I want you to be responsible. Um, buy your own food." Um, share with the bill, so you have mm. to work there. So, I, so this is what you call total independence, Jamie. Total yes. change of lifestyle, yes. total independence. Yeah. So well, have you I, I, have you now used to it now? Are you used to this lifestyle now? Um, actually, yes. But the most difficult for for me is the cooking part because I really don't know how to cook. But I am learning, and. Um, and my mom was really um, surprised when she found out I can now cook like the common Filipino dishes like the adobo or yes. the sinigang or the <laughs> milaga. Yeah. They were yeah. really happy but it, I'm still in the process of learning. That's okay because they say that necessity is the mother of all invention. So now because it's, re it's really a necessity for you, you have to learn how to do these things. Thank you for sharing that. And I will go back to that because I picked up on two important things that you've gone through. Let's uh, check in with Tina in terms of your own experience that you can oh, share yeah. to our viewers. Yeah, I guess if I'm going to share all my experiences here in Oz as international student, one hour is not enough. Plus yeah. a pile of, <laughs> plus a pile of tissue. Because <laughs> um, just kidding. Because I will share all the struggles that I encountered here, especially because I have children back home. So it's very very hard from um, the obstacles of different foods, unfamiliar living circumstances, and also financial. So that's the thing. So balancing my work, study, plus my parenting skills as online parenting, uh, uh, as an online parent. So every night we're doing our um, online uh, video calls. So at first, um, when I came here, I'm so excited. Excited in the sense that it's a new place, it's a new home. But then during my first week here, um, honestly, I cried every night. It's because I, I don't know, I'm just uh, being a woman, so especially being a mom, um, mm. leaving my children way back 
home. Right. It's very hard. It's heartbreaking. But um, during that time, I I making myself to um, to be strong. Yes, because no, be one, strong. no one will help you here in Melbourne. That's in, right. Uh, no one will help you. Only you, and then I eventually trying to get over it, being emotional person. So um, as time goes by, only once a month I'm crying. Now I'm not crying, but yeah, <laughs> it depends. On the mood. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, also it's because I'm a teacher way back home. I'm all I'm very socialized person. That's right. Now, yeah, now I'm only here with my husband. We're always. Uh, looking at each other and said, "Oh, maybe we're gonna exchange faces already because <laughs> we're all facing together, exactly. and then no one's around, and uh, yeah. our housemates in a different um, um, area of our, our home, so we didn't see each other. It's only me and him, and yeah. since it's a lockdown, and then also, um, but everything that one is a charge of experience. Plus, yeah. I want to share. It's not just I, I'm not sounding that I'm not." I'm discouraging people going here, but then I'm going to share the reality here. I experienced one day work, three kinds of job. At first in the morning, I work as a house cleaner. And in the afternoon, I work as a uh, warehouse cleaner. And then in the evening, I work as a kitchen hand job. On so top at the of end study. of the day, On top of uh, study. Plus, yeah, <laughs> but when I get home, oh, I knock down on bed and then waking up in the middle of the night study and then go to to um, school the next day so she yeah. just like I'm zombie mode we usually have a connotation here zombie mode because it's um juggling work and uh, my um, studies yeah. but then when my husband came here because I came here 2016 and my husband yeah. came here 2017 so it became more lesser as you said mm. a while ago that it's because my husband here, they, he helped me, especially in financial. That's right. So it's not because that I have family here, I have sisters. Um, we will not defend our financial things or our needs there. It's because they have their own family. They have yeah. their own responsibilities. That's and right. um, we are able to stand up on our own. But now, yeah, yeah I'm more adjusted and happy. more adjusted. That's good. This these things that you're sharing, Jamie and Tina, they're really important. We we cannot hide them because that's the that's the truth. And and that's what people need to realize that in pursuit of your dream, okay, in pursuit of your goals for your future, you have to sacrifice a lot. So you have to sacrifice. The lifestyle that you have in the Philippines, it's definitely going to change. You are right, Jamie, in saying you have to leave everything behind. It's no, There's no turning back. You know, you, it's all only moving forward and not, you know, you can whine and you can you can be grumpy sometimes to say, you know, oh, how I wish, ganito, ganon. But obviously, times have changed. And um, it, here in Australia, family is different from the support system that we have in the Philippines. You have lots of people to depend on. Like Tina said, now when you're overseas, if lucky you have your husband with you, but not all, all the rest of your family members. And even your sisters, they don't necessarily come to your rescue all the time. You have to learn how to do things on your own. I really truly um, appreciate what you're saying because um, it's the same with me when my family moved to New Zealand we had no relatives there well when we decided we will go without the kids like you in your case Tina we had to survive and when we were financially ready we that's the time when that we brought the kids with us and then we had to stay with another family in a very small room there were three kids and and the husband and me so it was really like squatters uh, in one bed one room <laughs> but we know that it's for the future. It's for the future. It's for the future. So we don't we don't regret our decision. And all the pain now, all the heartache that you have, it will reap its benefits later on. So at the end of the day, there will be smiles and laughters, and you will go back to the day and you will say, "It's good that I sacrificed." So the fruits of my labor are very very sweet after this. So everything that you're going through is just temporary. Believe me. And uh, it will become better, uh, especially with you, Tina. After the lockdown, you can take your kids and, and they can join you here as well. And that's a new routine, you know, helping them with school here and things like that. 
So, it's not easy. I'm pretty sure that international student means you have to spend some money. You did spend some money to, to pay for your education here. Are you sponsored by Federation University or are you self-funding your, your studies? Uh, are you in a scholarship or self-funded? Self-funded. Self-funded. Yeah. See? So yeah. you really have to work so you can support yourself while, while you're here. Okay, so maybe what I will ask you ladies is, I, uh, because this podcast has to have a learning outcome, <laughs> the people that are listening to us or are watching us should learn something from your experience. Can you share your top three tips to survive as an international student uh, studying in Australia and as a person, you know, from the personal perspective and from a student perspective, what are your top three tips or advice to other people who might be thinking, oh, I also want to be like them. I also want to go to Australia and, and study. Okay, anybody can uh, start. I guess I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. <laughs> one of the things, while you're thinking, I would like to share one thing. So, um, because we, we, are, we have where um, I'm keeping my time here in, in my show. Um, maybe one of the things that we have to do is be careful of your choice. You know, be serious about your decision. Do you really want to do this because uso siya or because uh, naiingit sila sa iba na may ganito experience? They really have to think about their finances. Can they really afford to support themselves to study overseas? And are they happy staying in their job and in their situation in the Philippines? Or gusto din nilang mag-improve yung buhay nila and they think that studying is the ticket to do that. Because they can be an OFW. They don't have to study. They can just immediately work. But you chose to study. You chose this new new path. Okay? So now, let's maybe you, you have um, your top three final tips or advice very, very quickly. Oh, so top oh, one advice. If you cannot find three, maybe top one. One thing that really resonates um, in you at the moment, Jamie. What's one advice you can give to the audience? Um, advice, I think, if you want to do something, go for it. By all means, um, be willing to do sacrifices in order to achieve what you want to do in life. That's it for me. Oh, that incorporates everything, right? Very good. Thank you, Jamie. And you, Tina, any last tip, message, advice to our audience? Um, don't be afraid to venture um, new things. And um, yeah, so because the challenges in life, it makes you strong. And um, also, if you're going to choose whoever wants to be uh, to come here as an international student, do you choose your course that it's in your passion? Mm. What is your passion? Uh, you're helping people or you want to do technical thingy or you want to be IT or something. It's because if you like that kind, if you love that work, it's you, you just came there, you come and your work every day that it's not uh, hard for you. But if you don't like that one it's just because only that my family told me or my friends told me so it will be uh, every day is a struggle for you that's it that's right thank you those are very good and very wise um pieces of advice you know what ladies time is short and i think we need a part two because there are more <laughs> things that we can discuss so i'll organize another time definitely a part two for this because we just scrap the scratch the surface of all the issues I wanted to talk about um, what the challenges are of being international students, how we can help other people who are struggling as international students. So I really definitely will um, bring you back here in the show for that. So um, thank you uh, for being with you to, for being with me today. It was really lovely to chat with you both. Um, so I, I think if people want more information about your experiences as international students, they can contact me through mimi at dinosocial.com um, and if they have any other topics that they want uh, to feature in the show, they can also do that. Sam Sari, my show is a member of the Gorilla Podcast Syndicate. You can reach out to me 
via my Facebook page, my YouTube channel, or my Twitter account. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tina and Jamie, again, thank you very much. It's now time to say goodbye. Let's just do a quick wave. And thank definitely, you. you will be back for part two, okay? You promise yeah. me you will be yes, back for part two. <laughs> Okay, thank you for having us here. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at nimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And if you want to know more, check out www.guerillapodcast.com.au or guerillapodcast.com.ph A Guerilla Podcast Syndicate Production.